Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Rostar and we are still negotiating a reality where the price of wheat flour has increased. So to speak to the work of Namdevco in responding to the situation, we have the CEO, Nirmala Devi Singh Prasad, joining us. Ms. Devi Singh Prasad, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Fine, thank you. It's a pleasure. It, and I'm really glad that you're able to make the time because we're seeing big things happening with Namdevco and the different farmers markets. So in terms of Namdevco's response to the wheat flour shortage or the increase in prices, what, it is, what is it that you all are doing? Because I see a lot of demonstrations, uh, so how people can use alternative flour. So what is the thrust from Namdevco's perspective? Namdevco is on a trajectory to looking at food security general availability of food. It's not just about root crop flowers, but based on the fact that flower prices have gone up, persons have been asking, what can we use? Because our budgets still need to be managed. And so we have looked at the advent of root crops because root crops are extremely available in our country and they're wonderfully available year round. We're talking about your sweet potatoes, your cassava, your dashing, your edos. Yams are available not as often as we are accustomed to the other root crops. So we have been looking at demonstrating to persons how you can use these root crops to convert them into flour, how you can use them in their natural form to, to make foods that you love on a daily basis and how it can generally contribute to your food and nutrition security needs for yourself and your family and how you can make mealtime interesting based on the local foods that we have here. One of the things that you would have noticed we've launched quite recently, we've launched a campaign that's called Total Local grow what you eat, eat what you grow. And our farmers markets speak directly to this campaign, where at the farmers markets, as you know, everything that's brought to sale is in direct line of the farm to table initiative. You are getting foods fresh from the farms, you are getting it direct from the growers, you are getting all of the nutritive benefits that foods can offer you because it's Within 24 hours of harvest, the food is brought to you for availability for sale. And in other instances, there is the availability of value-added food. Now, we started speaking about flour. Flour is and can be found at most of our markets. For example, Queen's Park Farmers Market, Dago Martin Farmers Market, Coover Farmers Market, Shaguanas Farmers Market, Arima Farmers Market, and the list goes on. Of the 10 farmers markets, you can find at least cassava and sweet potato flour at the 10 markets. You can also find other alternatives to wheat flour. So, for example, quite recently we had pigeon peas flour being made available at the Dago Martin Farmers Market. So these are some of the unique food additives, the unique food menu items you can look forward to at the farmers market that can help to supplement your needs for wheat flour and to improve your nutritive component of your meals and to make mealtime more interesting and exciting for yourself and your families. And I really like the fact that you talk about, as opposed to just saying, okay, well, flour, 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 flour. It has to be flour. Looking at the root crop for the root crop itself, because then we have different ways of preparing it, because one of the things we're doing is um, possibly even like a shepherd's pie with root crops, different root crops instead of potatoes, uh, looking at making hash, as opposed to just saying, okay, well, you're boiling or you're frying or you're making, it's like a like an Edo choker. Um, but one of the things that Namdevco has been doing is consciously promoting alternative flaws with demonstrations. Uh, so take me through that, please, Ms. Davis and Prasad. So the proof is in the eating. As you would notice, for the past three um, markets, 
we would have had chefs live at the markets doing actual cooking on site, doing actual food demonstrations. I mean, you get to eat right out of the pot. The product is prepared and made right before your very eyes. The school nutrition program has been extremely supportive in sending their best chefs, their best recipes that utilize 100% of wheat alternatives for us to enjoy some of the foods that we are accustomed to enjoying. So let me just tell you, we had doubles made with cassava flour, both pure cassava flour and as a composite. It's all based on your taste perception and your acceptance for different textures and flavors of food. We had pancakes that the little, our little children can enjoy, pancakes with guava syrup. I mean, it was well appreciated by the adults and the children who attended the demonstrations. We had Christmas fruit cake. We had sweet bread, all made with cassava and sweet potato flour. To be quite honest with you, the best sweet bread I have ever eaten till now was the sweet bread that was made from cassava and sweet potato composite flour. It was absolutely delicious. And you may ask, well, bread, we want bread because bread is a convenient food for when we have to make breakfast or grab a quick meal during the day or you don't have time for a long lunch. You may want something to make a sandwich. We have also demonstrated using one of our chefs who has been working with us how to make cassava flat bread, a bread that is extremely tasty Let's not forget to mention the nutritive component of it. Let's not forget to mention those of us who are looking at our calories and looking at food sources that are going to help us to stay slim along the waistline. These are some of the foods that can be made available and in a convenient form so that we can continue with our very busy lifestyles. And with that, we take a short break because we want to get back into the conversation about what NAMDEFCO is doing to promote food security in Trinidad and Tobago. We're doing so with the CEO of NAMDEFCO, Nirmala Devi Singh Prasad. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking about alternatives to wheat flour with the CEO of Namdevco, Nirmala Devi Singh Prasad. And I want to ask though, how does price and availability factor into the equation? And I like the fact that you spoke about total substitution versus composites. And I'm asking though, if everyone decided to use 25% more alternative flour, so they said, okay, well, the price point is not an issue, although we know it is for some individuals, could local markets supply that demand? Actually, the answer, the short answer to that is yes. Namdevco, on a monthly basis, we uh, publish our marketing, not marketing, sorry, our monitoring report data for everyone to see. And what I can tell you is as at the 31st of um, August, and let's even go up to the end of July, we have figures to show that approximately 1.1 million kgs of cassava was available for market and approximately 1.5 million kgs of sweet potatoes were available for market. And these are commodities that are in the ground that were of harvestable age and ready to come to market. So if I were to answer your question again, it's a resounding yes. We do have local volumes of these commodities that can be used up to, if you're saying 25%, we can substitute approximately 25% of our regular intake of carbohydrates using local carbohydrate sources, such as cassava and sweet potato. 
And I like the fact that you talk about carbohydrates versus flour, and this is a point that you would, would have made earlier in the conversation. It doesn't always have to be about flour as opposed to saying, okay, well, you are eating something. And But you spoke about having that data-driven sort of information or background context to work from. And that makes me want to ask again, give us a little more information about NAMIST, how it is you have an idea, what is in the ground, what is ready to harvest, what is ready to be available at these farmers markets. Thank you. NAMDEFU has an incredible team of officers who visit just over 3,500 farmers on a monthly basis. Now, let me declare that NAMDEFCO's Farm Certification and Monitoring Program is a purely voluntary program. So farmers who volunteer to join our program, these are the persons who we're going to be actively monitoring. And not only monitoring in terms of production data, but there is also a technical exchange of information to better improve your production practices and more importantly, and something that we are on the cusp of doing, is the introduction of a good agricultural practices certification program that is based on a good agricultural practices standard that was approved by the Trans Tobago Bureau of Standards and sanctioned also by cabinet. So there is that component of live available data of what is actually on the ground and that data populates NAMIS on a regular basis. As I said, every month you can look forward to the publications. And NAMIS not only publishes information um, about production, um, but we also publish on a daily basis on the NAMIS website price and volume data based on the trading activities at the Norris Dunery Northern Wholesale Market. And what's quite interesting for all of our stakeholders is that the NAMIS website is on a, 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 a track for improvement. We are currently upgrading our digital offering to Trinidad and Tobago and the stakeholders of the agriculture sector. There are a lot of new and exciting information to look forward to but more importantly, this information is going to be real-time data. So we recognize the need of the sector and we are including more ICTs into the way we do our um, marketing and market and provide market opportunities for our stakeholders. One of the reasons that I'm, I'm very grateful that we're having this conversation now is the fact that Sometimes when people hear food or agriculture or farmers, they think it is just, okay, well, we're shaking the data off of something and bringing it to market, as opposed to saying, okay, well, this is something that is also data-driven. And even going further with the, the data-driven uh, sort of mindset, working with high-performance athletes, saying, okay, well, these are things that you can do to substitute what is coming from outside so that you have a steady and consistent supply of nutrition that can help power these individuals. Talk a little bit about that, thank you, because you already spoke about chefs, but let's talk about the nutritionists a little bit now, please. Good. I'm, I'm glad you raised that because NAMDEFCO also has a memorandum of understanding with Sport TT, and we actually do a collaborative program where our athletes actually eat from our farmers markets and based on their special dietary needs they are able to get all of the nutritious and not boring i might say very very exciting foods to meet their dietary needs and not only in terms of their energy demands but in terms of their micronutrient demands as well for those of you who know about sports nutrition, you would know and understand that our micronutrients also play a key role in getting your muscles ready to work the way we want them to work. So um, the farmer's markets also offer that level of unique foods that are rich in antioxidants, that are rich in particular um, minerals and vitamins. And the beautiful thing is they're available year round. So um when we talk food security we're also talking nutrition security and that's incredibly important and again i want to reiterate our collaborative work with the school nutrition program as well as other um agencies such as aika 
FAO. Um, they've been great, great support agencies in helping us to achieve our mandate, which is marketing and market opportunities for Trinidad and Tobago. And you, you spoke about IACA, you spoke about the school nutrition program, you spoke about Sport ET. I think there's also something else that allows you to have farmers market at different tertiary institutions as well. Is Am, am I right with that? Tertiary institutions, you know what? Um, it's not just tertiary institutions. It's wherever the demand for a farmers market happens, we're there to make it happen. We have just over 600 farmers who uh, facilitate our farmers markets on a weekly basis. We have 10 farmers markets throughout the country, um, the latest being Maruga, and we always have farmers who um, want to join the farmers market program. Of course, all of the farmers on our farmers market program, they are monitored on a monthly basis by our field officers. So it's not just tertiary um, institutions that we're collaborating with, but just about any institution where there's a vested interest for food and nutrition security, not to mention uh, food safety. Now, you spoke about the, the meals aren't boring. They don't need to be boring. But at the same time, it may, be the, it may not be the easiest thing to go from zero to 100. This is the way I'm used to cooking this, 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 this meal. These are the ingredients that I'm used to preparing it with. Uh, so you have chefs doing the preparation or the demonstrations, but Will they be taking some of those recipes and putting it in a format that other people can use, can go with, can, avail, can engage with, saying, okay, well, this is how you substitute this, this is how you prepare this. How, how are we accessing that? Yes, yeah, so we're actually at the brink of um, publishing all of the recipes for all of the products that we've prepared for the last three farmers markets. And there is one thing that the chef said to the crowd that stood out to me. And up to today, I can't forget it because I so enjoyed the products that they prepared. And she said, you know what is the key to this? The key to this is they have to sift the flour about six times and the flour will do what you want it to do. And let me tell you, I tried it and it works. That is a beautiful thing, you know, because, you know, sometimes you, you, you do that, you, you follow the recipe and you think you follow it the way you're supposed to. And while the thing come out nice and soft, yours come out like big so. So, so in terms of like getting some of those things, those the, the little nuances, okay, well, it's not just sift once, it's six, sift six times. I think it's important. So in, yeah. in the... And you know, no, I was going to say that, you know, even our, our live demonstrations, it's not showing the crowd. We are actually showing you hands on in the bowls, in the pots. I mean, it's amazing. The Facebook uh, live demonstrations that are happening at our farmer's market, which is also going to happen this Saturday at our Shogona's farmer's market. But I'll let you in on a little something. This Saturday is unique because we're actually going to teach you how to prepare samples or quantities of flour in your kitchen using your kitchen equipment. So if you are interested in making a little bit of flour for your own purposes in your own kitchen using the equipment that you have, the demos will be available this Saturday at the Shogona's Farmer's Market for all to enjoy. And if you can't come down to the market, we're live on Facebook, so you can also, from the comfort of your homes, enjoy that learning lesson of how to prepare cassava and sweet potato flour using your stove, your blender, your food processor, and your knives. Simple, very simple equipment. All right, so we want to thank you so much, CEO Nirmala Devi Singh Pasad, CEO, CEO of Namdevco. And on behalf of the entire TTG News team, I'm DK Ronsel. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us.